you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport, courtesy of Younger Mitsubishi in Hagerstown, Maryland. I am quite excited to be in this one as always. The Outlander Sport has been completely redesigned for 2020 for the better without a doubt. Also relatively low starting price point in this one. Above average reliability according to consumer reports. That's definitely a huge plus as well. And of course you get Mitsubishi's 7 year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty as well. So a ton of peace of mind there not only with reliability but the warranty as well. So having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 outlander sport first one being the es starting at 22,595 se starting at 24,295 dollars sp starting at 24,645 be or black edition starting at 25,395 dollars and lastly the gt starting at 25,495 dollars and so that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration i did want to say that if you wanted to add all wheel control which is what mitsubishi calls their four wheel drive system add 1500 dollars to any of those prices but so powering the outlander sport will be a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder for all trim levels but the gt i'll get to both of them but for the sc we have today we have 148 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 145 pound feet of torque available at 4200 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels again through a cvt zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 9.5 seconds which on paper quite honestly is pretty darn slow we're going to test it out though we'll see how it feels but that's according to car and driver by the way mpg numbers come in at 24 city 30 highway for the front wheel drive 23 in the city 29 highway if you go with the all-wheel control or four-wheel drive system on this one either way taking regular unleaded fuel but so then the other engine configuration belonging specifically to the gt trim is going to be a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated inline four-cylinder 168 horsepower 6,000 rpm 167 pound feet of torque fill about 4100 rpm power set to front wheels or all wheels again through a CVT 0 to 60 time on that one approximately 7.9 seconds is so substantially quicker MPG numbers come in at 23 city 29 highway for the front wheel drive 23 city 28 highway for the all-wheel control system but so now having touched on all the engine specs like i mentioned to you guys i do have the se trim level today so we do not have that more powerful engine set up but let's go ahead and actually see what the acceleration feels like here in the outlander sport i'm going to get set up find a straightaway here and let's give this a shot all right in three two one go All right, it's, it's not the fastest thing in the world. You shouldn't have any issues with merging onto the highway, but quite honestly, it may be the slowest car I've tested so far this year. But the good news is if you did want a little more power, there is that GT trim level. So we'll just leave it at that. This isn't the quickest SUV in the world, but then again, you got the GT trim level if you did want a bit more power there. But so then to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.9 inch solid rear discs. And this is really one of the pluses of the Outlander Sport. Perhaps this makes up for the acceleration. 60 to zero stopping distance comes in at only 118 feet. Let me tell you guys, that is wonderful. For comparison's sake, listen to this. Toyota RAV4, 126 feet. Hyundai Kona, 129 feet. So 118 feet in the Outlander Sport is absolutely beautiful. That is wonderful. So if you're driving in rush hour traffic, you have to come to a quick stop. This is the one you're going to want to be in when it comes to the braking, at least. But so then touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, of course, front and rear stabilizer bars. And as far as the ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine for me in my short test drive today. So definitely no issues there. When it comes to steering feel, it's pretty much as expected. I will say it's a little bit on the looser side. So not the heaviest feel in the world. But again, 
and it's pretty much as expected for this segment, quite honestly. As far as road noise goes, I am on a ridiculously smooth road right now, but I will say once I get up to highway speeds, let me show you guys. You do get a little bit of wind noise, a little bit of road noise coming into the cabin, but again, at this price point, it's definitely manageable. I would have no issues because of the price point of the Outlander Sport, but you do get a little bit of cabin noise in this one. But so they're touching on visibility, I actually can see perfectly fine out the back, and that's one of the pluses of the Outlander Sport if you were comparing this to the Eclipse Cross. Since the Eclipse Cross has such a sloped roof line there in the back, you are definitely going to have more visibility in an SUV like the Outlander Sport if you were cross shopping those two at least. So honestly, visibility is perfectly fine for me in the Outlander Sport, so no issues there. But that about rounds up the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this new 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. All right, here she is, you guys, the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. Actually, it looks wonderful, in my opinion. And again, completely redesigned for 2020, so definitely for the better. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Full LED headlights to the sides. That is one thing I want to emphasize. A lot of vehicles out there come with low beam LED headlights, but very few of them, unless it's a luxury car usually, come with full LED headlights, which means low and high beams. So that is excellent. Well done, Mitsubishi, for that. LED daytime running lights also coming standard LED fog lights for the SE and GT trim levels. Therefore, we do happen to have them today. And of course, you do get automatic headlights with the SE and GT trim levels as well, along with satin silver grille accents. Again, just for those two trim levels there. And again, this new look is absolutely doing it for me. It looks a lot like the Eclipse Cross, which is definitely a good thing. But having said that, let's go ahead and make our way to the side on this one. Black roof rails are going to come with the GT trim level only. It's the only way you're going to be able to get roof rails on the Outlander Sport. However, rear privacy glass coming still standard across the board. Also, you have some accenting in on the front fender there. You guys can see that. When it comes to the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated for all trim levels and they will get integrated turn signals if you were to go with the SE or GT trim levels again. There's two trims are really where it's at with the Outlander Sport to be quite honest. But then take a look down at the wheel setup. 18 inch two tone alloy wheels are gonna come standard for all trim levels, but the black edition because black edition is going to give you of course 18 inch black alloys hence the name let's say then make your way to the back of this one shark fin antenna up top there of course rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper led tail lights coming standard across the board once again mitsubishi killing it with the leds absolutely love that trim level badging of course can be found on the right side of that rear lift gate and just below it all a single exhaust outlet however it is tucked away so you can't really see it but as always you guys know what we always have to do at this point here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are around back of the Outlander Sport, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it's pretty simple. There's a button on the lift gate itself. That is the uh, that is the one and only way to go ahead and open that one up. But once opened up, cargo capacity is going to come in at 21.7 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, that second row does fold down. There is a 60-40 split, bumping that up to 49.5 cubic feet. Also to go along with that in that cargo area, there is cargo lighting, there's cargo tie down hooks, and there also is a spare tire underneath of that cargo floor. That's where you're gonna go ahead and find that. But make our way to the rear leg room. That comes in at 36.3 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back there. Also for those rear passengers, they will also find a rear center arm armrest with cup holders back there as well so that's always nice for them but make our way to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating comes with all trims but the GT GT is going to be a little bit different it comes with soft touch seating surfaces essentially is how Mitsubishi puts it I should say heated front seats come standard for all trim levels it's definitely something you don't see that comes standard even on a base trim level with other manufacturers out there so love that Mitsubishi did that and as far as the seating goes although it is manually adjustable cloth seats these seats are plenty comfortable so so absolutely no issues for me, at least in my short test drive that I've had here today. So 
Then go ahead and make our way to the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is actually leather wrapped for the SE trim level and up. And you will get some red stitching if you were to go with the black edition trim level, a little accent stitching, so that's always good. Then take a look at the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. It is a pretty basic key. You got your Mitsubishi logo on the one side and of course lock and unlock on the other side. It is a push button start if you were to go with the SE that we have today or the GT trim level. So that's how you're gonna go ahead and get that. And there is actually a remote start available as an option for $545 if you wanted that as well. But so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and there is a push button start located just kind of to the right of the gate ages there. And so, but then once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right, and there is a small digital display front and center, giving you your basics essentially like outside temperature, trip A, trip B, engine temp, and of course your fuel information as well there. But so to take a look at overall interior quality, there is no power moonroof unfortunately, I always look for that first, I don't know why, but home link controls actually do come standard on the GT trim level, so if you wanted those, that's where you're going to get that. LED ambient lighting in the color blue is going to be a available as a $330 option if you wanted to go that round. That's probably something I personally would do. I always think that looks cool. And quite honestly, it's fitted pretty much as you would expect at this price range. So just in front of the shifter, there is a little bit of rubberized storage. I did want to mention that four-wheel drive button in front of the shifter. That is to lock it in four-wheel drive if it's snowing out perhaps in Maryland or Pennsylvania or wherever you're from. So that's going to be there for you as well. Just behind that, you have two cup holders along with your emergency brake, of course. And just behind all of that there's a decent amount of storage within the center armrest there's a 12 volt power outlet in there as well and i almost forgot to mention in front of the shifter you also have two usb charging ports and another 12 volt power outlet up there too and that's also where you're going to be able to find your heated seat buttons up there too so overall again it's pretty much as expected so no issues for me but now let's take a look at the tech display seven inch color touchscreen display comes with the es however all other trim levels actually get an eight inch color touchscreen display either way you get Bluetooth and audio streaming, but the eight inch color touchscreen display gives you Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This one's always important for me because it means all you need to do is hook your smartphone up to the Outlander Sport. It then displays free navigation up on that massive tech display front and center. You also have the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs up on that screen as well. And there's a couple other compatible apps, but that's why the eight inch color touchscreen display is going to be important, at least for me. You can also check out your radio settings up there though. When it comes to the sound systems, you will get four speakers with the ES and SP, six speakers with the SE and GT, and with that black edition, you actually get a Rockford Fosgate sound system, which is gonna be the best, of course. But nonetheless, we do have the six speaker sound system with us here today, so what do you say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Actually, decent amount of bass for a standard six speaker sound system. Really, more than I expected for that. So, not the best sound system out there, of course, but really, like I said, six speakers, that's not that bad. And so, the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys, of course, is when you do put the Outlander Sport in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for all trim levels across the board. I will say it's not the most high quality rear view camera I've ever seen, but nonetheless, it is there. So, I love that. But, anyways, that is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side and side curtain airbags do come standard, but in addition to that, a driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks also come standard, tire pressure monitoring system. And I did wanna also add the SE and GT trim levels are going to add in addition to that, a forward collision mitigation system with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, automatic high beams, and a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. And so in the end, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport, good reliability rating by Consumer Reports. That's always one of the most important Important things to start with. Love the redesign on this one. Also another huge bonus in my opinion, full LED headlights are almost unheard of at this particular price point. That's usually even an added option on manufacturers like BMW or Mercedes-Benz, but yet the Outlander Sport makes it standard for all trim levels. So I absolutely love that. Braking is again 
excellent on this one. You gotta love that, especially if you drive a lot in rush hour traffic. As far as constructive criticism goes on the Outlander Sport, the non-GT trim levels are gonna be a little bit on the slow side compared to the rest of the competition, I should say that. No power moonroof, unfortunately. Interior quality, of course, could be a little bit better, but if that's not something that matters too much to you, honestly, it's perfectly fine then. And lastly, I would say it's not an IIHS top safety pick, which is something I always look for to start with as well. But overall, because of the excellent redesign and the great reliability, that's the reason I wanted to go ahead and review this one today. So I love that. It's definitely worth a look, but ultimately it always comes down to personal preference. If I could sum this one up for you, if braking is super important and if full LED headlights are super important, this one really takes the win when it comes to those two things. So anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel. After all, I do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.